Now let's talk about Koch's postulates. What Koch's postulates are, they are the steps invented by a microbiologist called Robert Koch for figuring out which pathogen is causing a disease. We're covered in microbes. We have normal communities of microbes that live all over the outsides and insides of our bodies. So how do we figure out which one of those is causing a disease that we see show up in people? Robert Koch made up these steps, this method for uh, helping to figure that out and confirm wh what is the cause of a disease. So let's look at what these steps are. Step one, the suspected causative agent, so the microbe we think is causing the disease, is absent in healthy organisms, so people without the disease, but it's present in all of the sick ones. Second, when you take that out of the host, you can isolate it from the host and grow it in pure culture in a lab. A pure culture means you're growing just a bunch of that one thing. So you can find it in diseased organisms, but not healthy organisms. You can isolate it and grow it in pure culture in from the diseased organisms. Third, that, that microbe that you've just grown that can cause the disease when it's introduced into a healthy organism. So it causes the disease to show up in an organism that was healthy before being exposed to that pathogen. And then fourth, you can isolate it again from the new, from the new host. So you're showing that it's in the diseased organisms, not healthy ones. You can isolate it. It can cause the disease to occur when something is exposed to it, and then you isolate it and find that microbe again. It seems like a pretty good method, but it's based on some faulty or false assumptions about how microbes work. In this first step, one faulty assumption is that it's gonna be absent from all healthy organisms. We know that's not true. Sometimes you can have small amounts of that pathogen there, but it's not causing any symptoms. So the organism would appear healthy. They're, they might be an asymptomatic or resistant to this, to this microbe. Um, second, you can't always grow things in a lab. Our lab methods are pretty good, but they're never gonna be exactly the same as what's inside a host. We can't recreate the exact environment. We can get close, it can be similar, but some microbes don't grow well in a lab and some can't grow by themselves. For example, viruses that can never be in a pure culture because it's always mixed with host cells. So sometimes this second step doesn't work. Third step, there's a lot of ethical concerns here. So sometimes scientists are just not allowed to do the third step because it would be ethically wrong in a, with a serious disease to expose a healthy organism to that, that disease just to see if it can, can cause it. So sometimes the third step just never happens. Um, and then fourth, with the fourth step, we see the same things with the second step. Some microbes you just can't isolate and grow by themselves in a, in a lab. So these steps are good, they're helpful, but they don't work 100% of the time.